Well, hi there. Nope. Not at all. I'm really not sure there's a bird less well-suited to being kept as a pet. Yes, there used to be dinosaurs that were less suited to being kept, but they've all been extinct for a while now. But technically, you could get one. And I'm here at the Loveland Living Planet Aquarium in Draper, Utah. They have them. They are people like you. There is a path. It is just not a reasonable path for most people. Not a bad dream, though. And penguins are awesome. If you meet someone that doesn't like penguins, probably stay away from that person. What, what's even going on? I mean, they fly underwater. They're dense, at least for a bird. Most birds are staggeringly light for their size. This makes flight possible in air. Well, penguins don't fly through air. And if they were as light as most birds, they would be very buoyant in water. This would mean that it would take a lot of energy just to submerge themselves. So penguins are heavy. And the physics of their underwater flight, given how quickly they can accelerate, is staggering. They take off like squid, but squid of jet propulsion. It's just remarkable. Anyway, penguins are amazing. And this, the Gentoo penguin, is the third largest and is a very cool penguin indeed. So let's go ahead and give them a score based on our five categories, mostly to see where they fall. We know this isn't the best pet bird, might be the worst pet bird, but how does it compare to a black tip reef shark? Will it be a lower score than our current low score champion, the human child? Let's do this thing. And let's find out just how unreasonable the path is, because it can be done. As always, our five categories are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, I really don't know what it's like to handle or interact with a penguin. That is why I've come here to the Loveland Living Planet Aquarium in Draper, Utah to have a penguin encounter. Let's go see what it's like to interact with a Gentoo penguin. Hi, dudes! Uh. <laughs> Morning, penguin! Morning! Hey, 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 and therefore is much more friendly with people. Uh, he likes to hang around us almost any time the door is open. He wants to be in this room. Vitamin for cocoa. Vitamin for Freya. Good 
that was one of the most amazing experiences I've ever had. Jason has a what shaped hole in his heart? Penguin. A penguin shaped hole in his heart. He didn't even know that until we had this penguin encounter. It was amazing. And after this incredible experience with Gentoo penguins, we give the Gentoo penguin a score of two out of five when it comes to handling. They are honestly delightful. And captive, bred, and raised Gentoo penguins like these, they can be very, very pleasant. Right? You can get in very close proximity to them. You can feed them. As they're coming by, you can reach out and touch them a little bit. If you find one like Uno here, who was hand raised by humans, he actually was extremely affectionate. He came right up to me. He started to preen me. I feel like I'm one with the penguins now, like I'm in the penguin club. He was awesome, but it's not like you can just pick them up and grab them. They will A, run away from you, B, bite you, C, slap you with their crazy wing flipper, which hurts, apparently. I was able to avoid any of those slaps. I did get some affectionate, happy bites. I didn't want to get any of the aggressive, angry bites. You pretty much have to do things on their terms, and in general, they don't want to be touched. But they are very, very pleasant to be around. It was such a cool experience, I will never forget it. You know what? There aren't a lot of good penguin care guides out there. But I know enough to give them a score of 0 out of 5 for care. What I can tell you is that you need a giant room that you keep very cold. I mean, these live on and around Antarctica. So not kinda cold, really cold. Imagine that air conditioning bill. You need hundreds, probably more like thousands of gallons of water, preferably salt water, that you keep clean. That's not a filter you can get at Petco. Each penguin is going to eat hundreds of pounds of fresh fish each year. And they will do much better if you have a large number of individuals. This isn't a solitary creature. But to give you a much better idea of what you would really be getting into, I want to introduce you to Carly from the Loveland Living Planet Aquarium that actually cares for these penguins. To talk just a little bit more about what it is actually like caring for and interacting with Gentoo penguins, we have the amazing Carly from here at the Loveland Living Planet Aquarium who cares for these penguins <laughs> every day. If somebody was seriously, like, say somebody wanted their own penguin, they'd probably need a group of penguins, right, because they're very social. Yes, yes. What would that actually look like? Like, what would the reality of having a group of penguins be like? So it is a lot of work. Obviously, uh, if you're going to have a Gen 2 penguin, you have to make sure that it's cold enough for them. Uh, so it has to be probably under 45 degrees, preferably. So you have to have a room that's constantly chilled to 45 degrees. It's very, very not comfortable temperature. <laughs> um, you have to have a water system that they can swim and dive in. Uh, so I mean, it's hard to tell you exactly like how big that would have to be, uh, but big enough that they're going to be able to swim and dive. And this um, is one of the fastest penguins in the world, right? So I would assume yes. more space. Yes. I mean, more space is always better than less space, for sure. Um, and again, like the more penguins you have, the more space you're going to need. <laughs> so there's a lot of factors that go into that. Uh, so it's going to be cold. Um, it's also very messy. Um, birds, <laughs> birds in general, uh, go to the bathroom very, very frequently. Penguins are no exception to that rule. Uh, they're probably, on average, each bird is pooping every 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, and so it's, it's a lot of poop. Uh, we <laughs> clean pretty heavily in here at least once a day. Sometimes we give it a second spray down at the end of the day. And that doesn't even include like seasonal cleaning and doing, trying to do deep cleans every week. That's just like daily scrubbing. Uh, so also you have to have a lot of fish because uh, these guys, when they get really hungry, they can eat a lot of fish. How much are we talking? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> um, so when they are at their hungriest, each bird can eat about 40% of its body weight. It's, it's a lot of fish. Is that every day? Uh, every day. Oh my goodness. Every day. Uh, so like a couple weeks ago when they were getting ready for their molt, they were eating uh, about 20 kilograms of fish, which is going to be over 40 pounds of fish every day for all of our penguins. How many are there total? We have 21 right now. So that's over 
Did you say two kilograms per day per penguin? Tw well, yeah, tw yeah, it's gonna be Holy in there. Cow. In there, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. That of fish. is incredible. How susceptible are they to diseases, illnesses, things like bumblefoot and stuff that a lot of birds get? Like. Or are they pretty darn hardy? Uh, you know, I feel like it's kind of in the middle ground. They definitely uh, can have problems with bumblefoot, uh, something we want to watch out for. Uh, but just like with a lot of other birds, you have to pay attention to what kind of, you know, like substrate and stuff that they're walking on. Um, and I don't know if you've noticed, but like the ground in here is not flat. And that's mm -hmm. one of the big things that can cause problems for birds and lead, lead to bumblefoot. And I think that a lot of like the gradation and like the little rivulets and everything all over uh, plus you know they're jumping and they're climbing and for half the year uh, during breeding season we have a whole bunch of little pebbles covered in this exhibit so then they're walking on like uneven pebbles and so I think all those factors um, help so that we don't have problems with bumblefoot at least in this exhibit mm -hmm. but definitely like there are other places where that is or can be a problem mm -hmm. um, so they're definitely susceptible to that but one of the big ones that penguins are known to be susceptible to is aspergillus, which is a, actually it's a fungal infection. Mm -hmm. And most places you actually have it, but it's just when it's so high that it then causes problems. Mm -hmm. um, and it is like an airborne fungal thing. Uh, it's one of those things though, that once the penguins get it, you can't really get rid of it. So it's something you have to be very, very aware of. And if you're like bringing new birds in, if they have aspergillus, they can definitely like, um, infect the whole colony. Yeah, infect the whole colony, and then you have to just manage kind of them for the rest of their lives. Wow. Here, we don't have to deal with that a lot. The biggest reason is because they're on a closed system. Because we're in Utah and we have hot summers, we have to make sure they have these cold temperatures all the time. So they're not exposed to as much uh, like outside air, mm. uh, which, you know, does have its pros and cons. But one of the good pros is that the likelihood of aspergillus is significantly decreased. Oh, okay. Well, that's, that's very cool. So probably given where they live, a pretty hardy bird, but they've still got some of the problems that birds typically run into. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, I've always been impressed at how well they like pop back up. Like they fall all the time oh, okay. and they just like <laughs> pop up like fine. nothing happened. Did it on purpose. And you're like, you, you just <laughs> fell like three rocks. You're, you're good. And they're like, I'm fine. <laughs> this is how we do. Please. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> What else? What else would a person need to know if they were like, I seriously would like a penguin in my life? <laughs> it's not like a friendly pet. It's not like a dog that you're going to be able to cuddle and go play fetch with. Um, they want to do their own thing. They don't like to be touched. Uh, I mean, we have one hand raised penguin in our colony here. At, at the aquarium that is more interested in people. He'll walk up to people, he'll hang out by people. Uh, he was standing right by us here at the beginning. Yep. Um, he has Giving since, us a piece of his mind. Yes, yes. He has since left and decided to do something different, but um, they very much want to do their own thing. They're not like, I want all the attention. I want to be petted. I want to cuddle with you. No. So it's, you're just going to clean up their poop and feed them fish and then stare at them. Uh, I was curious <laughs> about that because you know, that's been one of my big takeaways from this experience is they'll come up with you. Like if you've, if you've got one like Uno that is super socialized, he'll come up and he'll interact with you on his terms. But it doesn't seem like I could reach out and pet him. Like they seem less social even than most other birds. Oh, yeah. Does it get, is, it, is your relationship with them much different than the relationship that other people have? Like, could you reach out and touch them? No, not even me. I mean, I'm in here all the time and it's the same thing. You know, if Uno is interested in maybe some something, he will come up to me. Yes. Uh, but he definitely, like, if I try to reach out and touch him or like do anything, he does not respond well to that. Same thing with all the rest of them. They are not like, oh, you're here all the time so I can be friends with you. N no. I, no, I think that's one of the most <laughs> surprising things. You know, I, I think when people, sea penguins you know they're adorable they're wonderful people think oh i want to cuddle this they don't think about the fact it's going to be pooping copious amounts of poop on me every 15 minutes the whole time and what they really don't realize is they won't put up with that at all no at all and and that's really really interesting is in you know for the most part except for the one that they're pair bonded with they don't even seem to get that close to each other. No. Usually a couple feet away from each other. And if they get closer, they start bickering and biting. And <laughs> yes, we often <laughs> refer to penguins as being socially unsocial because they have to have friends. They want to live in a colony and in a group, but they have like a, a, a space bubble, you know? And yes. it's like, you have to be here, but, but not within, you know, my you know, 
for COVID, six foot bubble. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, they were social distancing <laughs> before it was cool. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much for allowing us to come back here, for showing us the penguins, for allowing us to be here for a feeding and participate. I have yeah. learned so much and had an absolutely unforgettable experience. Thank you, and I, I hope a lot of people get a chance to come here and have this experience because this is something that anyone can do. And that's so cool that you offer that. Yeah, yeah, it is. We do offer a penguin encounter uh, every day of the week, except for Wednesday. Um, and our guests get to come into a back of house space. They get fish. Uh, they get to try to feed the penguins. And they get uh, like 30 to 40 minutes of like kind of unsolicited penguin time uh, where so they can cool. just see penguins, feed the penguins, talk to a penguin keeper that works with them and has some knowledge that can hopefully answer almost any question that they have about penguins, which is pretty cool. It's all of the best things about having penguins without all of the worst things about having penguins. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. That's so cool. Thank you so much, Carly. When it comes to hardiness, we give the Gen 2 penguin a score of three out of five. For a bird, these are actually relatively hardy. The main thing is you have to get this extremely elaborate enclosure right. You need to keep it clean and you need to feed them a tremendous amount of food. That said, if you do so, they live uh, basically in one of the most inhospitable places in the world. They're pretty hardy. When it comes to availability, we give the Gen 2 penguin a score of zero out of five. Technically, you can get almost anything. Obviously, you can get a Gen 2 penguin. But few creatures that technically can be obtained are as difficult to obtain as a penguin it's going to take a lot of permits. And those permits are pretty much going to require that you own a reputable zoological facility. So start there. Then you will have the challenge of finding a facility with penguins that they want to sell to you. So owning your own zoo might not be enough. Somebody that is watching this might actually do this someday. But the odds are pretty darn good that it won't be you. Prove me wrong. I love good zoos. Get on it. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the Gen 2 Penguin a score of 0 out of 5. When the first thing that you need is a quality zoo, the cost is going to be crazy. Plus the costs associated with obtaining your permits. Then you need to pry the penguins away from another institution. And you're going to need an enclosure that would probably result in these guys getting a 0 anyway. It ain't pretty. That's before we get to the costs of feeding them. This is Bond villain money. What kind of Bond villain has a room full of penguins? Seems more like something that a Batman villain would have. And let's be honest, unless you're a mitten-handed, long-nosed Batman villain, you probably don't have the time or resources that it would take to get your own penguins. But for a totally reasonable amount of money, you can come here to the Loveland Living Planet Aquarium in Draper, Utah, and spend time with their Gen 2 penguins. Honestly, even if you have to fly here from the other side of the world four times a year to get your penguin fix, this will be by far the most budget-friendly option. Plus, you can make the penguins jealous as they can only fly underwater. And this is why we give the Gen 2 penguin an overall score of 1.0 out of 5. You can get one, but I can say with a high level of confidence that you are never going to get one. Fortunately, places like this, the Loveland Living Planet Aquarium, exist. You can have experiences with penguins. And in many, many ways, coming here regularly to interact with penguins is much better than having your own. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Each penguin is going to eat hundreds of pounds of fresh fish each year. Yes, I did. <laughs> of course I did. Who would say that? And who wouldn't have noticed? <laughs> I'll do it again. I'll do it again. <laughs> How can anyone not notice? <laughs> oh dear. I never. I didn't even. I didn't even think to do that until just now. <laughs> more other questions you want? The proper pronunciation is penwing, correct? Uh, according to Benedict Cumberbatch, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we give the Gen 2 penwing. You did it again. I did that on purpose. When it comes to hardiness, we give the Gen 2 penwing.
<laughs> now I didn't. Now I didn't. Now I'm. I know I forgot what they're called. <laughs> Benedict. Benedict. And this is why we give the Gen 2 penguin an overall score of four out of five. Oh jeez, it would be a lot of work. Um... You're so worth it, though, Uno. Uno has an opinion on that yeah. too. Um... <laughs> Uh, well, is there anything else that you think people need to know about Gen 2 penguins? They like to express their voices. Yes. Yeah, you're taking care of me. <laughs> Thank you. I know. Surrounded by penguins. I didn't realize this was your life. <laughs> <laughs>